So Audi hit the ground running in 2022 with the launch of six electric vehicles, EVs, you know. Um, and I am now in w probably my sort of vibe, okay, because even though there's the GT, which is like the really exciting one, I love the sort of family orientated, obviously, because it's got more space and I like the practicality. So I'm in the 55, this is the Quattro S line. Um, I mean, off the bat, okay, let's talk about e-tron just in general. Like, you probably wouldn't know that it's an electric car, right? Unless you're, like, super into cars and whatever you're paying attention all the time. Um, so this, you wouldn't know, I don't think, really. Um, it's sort of like Audi's remained quite conservative um, in their styling. If you take the BMW iX, for example, I mean, that's, like, polarizing because people are, like, either love it or hate it. Okay, my um, cable for <laughs> my um, cam no camera is touching the screen and so it turns it on by mistake. I keep thinking it's a ghost or something. No, but now stop it now. Now I'm trying to turn it off. <sighs> Let's see. Can I oh, okay. Okay, I managed. Um, so yeah, that like I like that you can tell the difference. I think because it then makes him stand out a bit. Um, but I get it, Audi's probably just like, do you know what, here's just a different version of what we do so well, like a very similar version, actually not a very different version. Um, the interior is the same, I mean this is just 100% familiar Audi interior. It's beautiful, it's lovely, elegant, very premium, um, I mean I love an Audi interior, so I love this. There's two things that maybe will give it away, okay, that it is in fact an electric vehicle and the one is the gear lever very slick very cool weird little futuristic -y thing here but what is futuristic are the side mirrors okay it totally freaks me out and it will take some time to get used to so you've got cameras here instead of side mirrors and then it projects it onto a screen down here on either side um, so, you know, probably very much safer as well because it like lets you know if there's someone in your blind spot and 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 and. But the problem for me is I'm not a big fan of cameras on cars anyway. So I never use a reverse camera, ever. I always use my side mirrors and everything. The only time I will really use mine is when I think maybe there's like a boulder behind me or something that I haven't seen. But other than that, I don't. So for me, this is so weird. It's weird. I mean, I love it because it's sort of futuristic and, and like different. But I can, and I keep looking up here. I mean, it just takes time to get, once you've driven this car for, you know, sort of a couple of weeks or whatever, you'll be like d -d 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 normal. But so I keep looking here, you know, the line, the sight of, line of sight, and then not there. And then I'm like, oh, fuck. Okay. It's weird. Uh, but yeah, that's it. Um, Within the sound of silence. Ah, uh, DJ Kosher. I love this version. So space-wise, again, like this is like a family SUV. It sits between sort of the Q7 and the Q5, in, like size-wise. Um, super amounts of space. The boot is at 660 liters, which is lovely. Um, Luca, with him in the car seat, the front passenger, because of the way the dash has been designed there, you know, you don't have like a motor engine in here and stuff. It kind of curves back. And that's really nice because it doesn't matter if you pushed up, you might have this close to you, but your legs aren't being like banged up, which is great. So this has got a 95 kilowatt hour battery in it. So you're getting 300 kilowatts of power, 664 Newton meters of torque to get you to 100 in just 5.7 seconds. If you put it in dynamic mode, I think that's one of the most exciting things about an EV is the fact that it has that instant power. It's sort of gets a bit addictive because you want to just keep putting your foot down. I mean, you can overtake anyone and anything in mere seconds. Um, so that I love. I love this part. I would probably keep it in eco mode because I suffer from range anxiety. I don't have a charger at home, um, but I know that it takes quite a long time at home anyway. So you'd have to charge it, so like, you know what I mean? Like full on overnight, I think like eight to 12 hours or something it might take, I don't know. Um, so you'd have to go to like the malls and everything. I think that's where a lot of South Africans specifically are still struggling with this because 
I don't want to go and sit at a mall for an hour and a half for the pure fact of charging the car. So if I'm going there on purpose and I've got to go do some shopping, fine. But I don't often spend an hour and a half at a mall. Like, I don't go for lunch at a mall, ever. Um, I would have to start doing that because I need to charge my car. I at least only have this for a couple of days. And the range is about 370 to about 440 Ks, which is pretty good. Um, let me just quickly overtake this guy. I mean, seconds, seconds. Thank you so much. Um, so I think real world, 380 sort of kilometers you're gonna get, um, which is far. I mean, that's perfectly far. I mean, I don't do that amount of traveling in a week, really. I think it's sort of perfect for your commute and school runs and grocery store and da 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 da, whatever, your kind of day to day. I still think that South Africans are going to have to have an internal combustion engine car as well. If you want to do long road trips and everything, it's fine. We can do it and, and a lot of journalists are talking about it and are, are testing it out. Okay, so it is absolutely doable. You can go on a road trip. It just is changing the road trip somewhat because you've got to be really, really well planned. Um, very well planned. You can't be like, okay, cool, 50 Ks. You know, I'll have 50 k's left and I'm going to get to a charging station. You might not have 50. You might think that you're going to have 50 and then actually real world you have none. And then you sort of stuck. Um, and I think you also need to factor in a lot more time. You, because if you stand, it's like an hour and a half waiting time. Plus you don't know if someone else is at the charging station. And then you've got to wait longer and stuff like So it just changes the dynamic of a road trip. So for me, it wouldn't be enough right now. I'm just too anxious about that. I'm anxious about fuel. In terms of like if I'm gonna run out so this would just do my head in. Um, the other thing I think a lot of people complain about is the lack of sound do you know like that these are gonna become like electric vehicles essentially are gonna become thank you uh, the same because there's no real driver engagement at all you know unless you just put your foot down but you can put that you can do that in an i3 you can do it in this you can do it in the GT it's gonna have the, that same sort of addictive feeling but that's kind of it the rest of it is all pretty much the same. I love the silence. I don't actually even know. I must be honest. I don't really notice it that much anymore because it's things. You just get familiar with it. Get used to it. I love it. I think it's so nice to have the silence is golden, golden. Oh, price-wise. So this model is around just over 2.1 million. I just wish we would see some budget EVs come into the country. It would be so nice. Imagine we got like 200, 300,000 Rand EVs that we could test and that people could buy. We would see lots more on the roads, I think, which would be great, you know, for those day to day vibes. Ah, oh, well. Either way, I do love this. I think I preferred the iX in terms of looks and different being like an EV and stuff like this. But this is just that familiar, beautiful Audi. And maybe that's what you want when you, an Audi fan going into an EV. You don't want something to jar your sort of expectations and your feelings and stuff about it. So go Audi. Songs that voices never share. No one.